Welcome guys, in this tutorial we will see how to simulate a vertical axis wind turbine and calculate the moment of the turbine that means the torque of the turbine by giving a particular speed. Let's open the ANSYS workbench. Drag and drop the fluid flow fluent system inside the workbench. And before starting let's save the workbench file. Now we can see that the workbench file is saved and double click the geometry to create a geometry using design modeler. Since I am going to draw a three dimensional model of a vertical axis savannah wind turbine, I am going to draw the cross section of the turbine from the top view, top view in the sense that is in the ZX plane. So I am clicking the ZX plane and click sketching. Before sketching I will change the units to centimeters. In order to view that ZX plane normal to us, I am clicking the Y axis. Now the ZX axis is normal to us and now we can start drawing. Select circle and draw two circles on either sides. Let's give the let's give a constraint that both the circles are having equal diameters or equal radius. Then give the diameter of the circle. Let's have that as a 30 centimeter or 1 feet as diameters. Since we need to have a savannah wind turbine, we need to trim out the unwanted portions. Go to modify and click trim and delete half of that circle from both the circles. Now go to offset and offset the sketches, select the sketches, right click and give in selection and place offset. Now click anywhere in the space and give the dimension, go to dimension and give the dimension between these two points. As 0 0.5 centimeters. And close the sketch by using a line. Similarly do the same on the other side. Now we have drawn the cross section of the Savannah wind turbine. Now we can click extrude and give a depth of 60 centimeters that means 2 feet and click generate. So now we have drawn the geometry of a Savannah wind turbine blade. In order to simulate the Savannah wind turbine we need to have a fluid body around this geometry and we need to give a mesh motion and to rotate the blade. So we are creating an enclosure by using the option tools and clicking enclosure. Change that to cylinder and change the cylinder alignment by Y axis because we are having the axis in the Y axis. And give an uniform cushioning as 0.5 centimeters on all the sides. Now we have created an enclosure around the wind turbine blades. So this whole circle, this whole cylinder should be rotated in order to rotate the wind turbine blade during our simulation. Then create another enclosure that is rectangle in shape, box enclosure. I am giving 30 centimeters on all the sides and only on and this negative x direction I am giving a higher value and click generate. So now uh, we can have this surface as, a, as the inlet of the blade so this will be the upstream and this will be the, the downstream. So generally we need uh, more space in the downstream in order to uh, see the flow pattern. So even this dimension is not enough. Just for a demonstration purpose, I am having this much of dimensions. So now what we have is three bodies, but we don't want this uh, body that is the uh, blade body. So we can suppress that body. So now we have two bodies. One is that cylindrical body and then rectangular box body. So now the geometry has been done. Let's click save. 
and we can close the geometry. Now double click the mesh. It will take some time to load the geometry in the ANSYS meshing module based on your computer's configuration. Now we can see two solid bodies. One is a cylindrical en enclosure, another one is this prismatic enclosure. Let's go to the selection filter and click the face selection icon and click this and right click and give name selection. Name that as inlet. Similarly, go to the rear surface and right click and give a name selection and name that as pressure outlet. Then we need to name the solid geometry itself. So click this whole body and now select this. So name this geometry as outside enclosure. And select the rotating body and name that as you can also suppress this geometry or you can also hide this geometry. Right click and you can hide body and now we can see only the cylindrical enclosure. Now right click and click and give a name as rotating body. And now click the face selection icon. Change the mode to box select and then select all these surfaces within this region. So now it will select all this region inside that uh, all the surfaces of that blade. Now right click and give a name selection as blade. So now we have the following name selections inlet and pressure outlet and outside body that is uh, hidden now. Let me show the body now. So this is the outside body and this is the rotating body and this is the blade. So now we have named all the geometries that we need. Now we can select mesh. By default there is a mesh size of 141 mm. So let's change the unit to centimeters. So it is having 11 centimeters. Let me try to reduce the mesh size and create the mesh. Now it seems that we have generated a moderate mesh but it is not uh, quite fine. So we can also check the mesh size of the mesh inside that uh, rotating body by using a section plane. Click the section plane and make a cut along the center and you can see uh, there is the mesh of the elements. If you want to have fine mesh you can also change the mesh size we have given 5 centimeters we can also change that to 3 or 2 centimeters based on your computational power that we have in your system okay once the mesh is generated you can close this meshing module uh, it is not updated i am right clicking and clicking the update once the mesh is updated you can double click the setup to enter into the fluent system if you have more number of cores you can also select to have more number of cores once the fluent module is open since we need to have a transient analysis, we have to enable this time to transient so that we can rotate the blade geometry with respect to time. Enable gravity so as to have a realistic gravitational acceleration 9.81 that should be in negative y direction. Then click models and leave the viscous model as SSTK Omega that will be a good model to simulate that. Then go to materials by default air will be available so we need not to assign anything specially. Go to cell zone conditions, there will be two zones, outside enclosure and rotating body. Double click the rotating body and we need to rotate that body with respect to time. So go to mesh motion, select the rotational axis as the 0, 0, 0 because we have created the geometry at exactly at the origin. We have kept the y axis as the axis of the rotation of the blade. So change the y to 1 and leave 0 in the z axis. So by default the speed is in radians per second. In order to change that unit you can go to units and navigate to angular velocity and change to revolution per minute. So that we can enter that in rpm. So let's have 50 rpm as the speed of the blade and click apply. Then close the tab. Go to the boundary conditions. Go to the inlet and give a velocity magnitude of 10 meter per second. Then click apply and close. 
now leave all other settings and let's check the mesh interface whether this contact region is established correctly that is established now click close since we need to monitor the torque of the blade we need to create a report file click new and here also click new and uh, add a force report that is moment moment on the blade on this y axis and leave that moment center as 0 0 0 because we have created the geometry exactly at the origin click ok Okay, now we have an additional report definition, add that to the report file. So now we have float time and report definition here. This report definition is the uh, torque value. Be sure that this uh, get data every time step and click OK. And then close this. And in order to view the velocity plot across the cross section of the blade, we have to create a section in between, uh, we have to create a cross section along this horizontal axis so i am creating a new plane that is zx plane at the center of that plate so we have the units meters so let's change that unit to change the unit of length to centimeters so this is exactly at the center of that plane and click create and name that as mid plane close and we should also plot the velocity as well as the pressure across the cross section. So I need to have a, I need to save the contours each and every time step. So for that I am using an option called execute commands. Double click the execute commands. So create a new command and that should be executed every time step. So each and every time step we need to save the plots. This is the text user interface code that is used to save the image. So I will also share this uh, file in my website. You can also get that and add the command here. So this will save the file uh, in the name of V and the time step velocity plot. Also the uh, isometric view of the velocity along with the float time. And uh, once you add this code, you can click to OK. You can see this command is active and you can close this. Now we can run the calculation. Let's give a time step size of a uh, number of time steps as 500 and time step size as 0 0.001 and click calculate. You can observe that at the end of each and every time step, the contours will be saved in the uh, file names that we have specified in the text user code that is in the execute commands. Let's minimize the file and let's see where the contour plots are being saved. This is the file where we have kept the workbench file. Go to that and you can see the workbench files and you can see the DP0, double click the triple F and go to Fluent. You can see the images that are being plotted are saved here. So once you have all the images for all the time steps, you can use these images to create an animation. You can combine these images to create an animation using any other software. You can also see that the moment that is being generated is plotted in the Excel file. As a CSV file, you can open the same location. I hope this video helped you. If you have any doubts or clarification, please feel free to contact me. Thank you.